Yo, how's it going, guys? Koi here. Today, we're going to be doing... I recorded about, like, two hours of gameplay, but I'm going to show... The reason I say this is because I'm going to show you guys uh, on the screen, clip by clip, every single thing about advanced combat in this game. How, uh, how to engage, how to disengage, how to use your moves correctly, what objectives do you need to take on in order to actually compete and beat everyone in the game. Now, I don't know how much influence I actually have, but I, I'll tell you this. The fact that this video, if it does, you guys need to blow up this video because I literally cover every single system in the entire game. And the reason I say that is due to the fact that the systems in this game are a little complicated if you're new to the game and it's a little harder for a lot of people to understand. Uh, some objectives are clearly more like way more powerful than other objectives and stuff like that You know what I mean? Like there's some very very important things that you need to do. There's some important uh, uh, Objectives you need to complete and let's go ahead and dip down into the uh, Selection so I'll show a little bit of the selection screen. I'll show a little bit of the stuff here and there the only thing I'm not going to show is probably a acquisition cards because they are so uh, They just don't make any sense for me to show because they're not exactly in the beginning of the game until you reach a certain rank so uh that's more for like something later on this is still an advanced guide for all combat related stuff but cards are not exactly the winning factor in all games so uh, let's dip into it first things first definitely whenever you're selecting your character as you know selecting your character only gives you the valuable option of selecting one of the type of character that you need to select such as if you are the helper then you only can get like uh what do you call it if you're the not the helper but the support unit blue then you can only pick support characters same thing with the helper selection if you're getting a blue character then you have to use blue character cards and blue helpers so uh, that's just the important part. I just wanted to make sure we clarified that because a lot of people are probably wondering why can't I use my red cards on my blue characters? And it's due to the fact that that's just not how it works. Uh, there are different rules of engagement. And the rules of engagement are incredibly important because... Uh, well, actually, we should probably start off with the map stuff. Yeah, let's start off with the map stuff. So whenever you do start the game, collecting levels, getting to level 5 is going to be the most immediate thing that you need to do. Defeating the Grand Kai in the middle of the two uh, people. In the middle of the two like routes, you'll see that there's a much stronger guy in the middle. And he'll be at the top or uh, bottom, depending on which lane that you're at. And he'll be like a Grand Kai. And those dudes are the dudes who are going to be like, you kill them, you get a fat stack of bonus EXP. If you were the first team to do that, you could pretty much steamroll the other team in the beginning of the game until they stop farming. So the objective is to outfarm the other person. The game plays incredibly fast paced. So if you stop farming even a little bit when you do not have a push, then you're going to lose very quickly. Now, the other part is, right, is that you also have to force them into objectives. And you have to force uh, yourself to also restrict yourself from always pulling the next punch. Now, the reason I say this is because Zeno is going to be flying around. And uh, early game Zeno push is not going to be as valuable as a mid game Zeno push. Now, a Zeno push is whenever Zeno is coming down your lane. You'll see it'll be like a little counter on the side of your mini map, whether that be on the right, left side. And you'll see Zeno fly across the map. He'll start targeting the tower and he'll stun the tower so you can take care of it. There are some key things that you guys need to understand whenever this type of push is being done. Now, it's either you take the push or you complete a side objective, whether that be catching up leveling or catching up as in defeating the mini boss, which is Nappa, uh, Nappa, Reverian, Android 16, and Jocko. Those dudes, they are going to be able to help you out into uh, hitting the other tower very, very quickly and doing bonus damage to the other tower. And these assists are critical to pushing the front line as soon as possible. If you could do this, this is the equivalent of getting a free massive amount of damage towards your enemy's base, and you can pretty much push on through that because that also forces Grand Zeno to push those towers much quicker due to the fact that that's why Grand Zeno goes farther in certain categories, is because you kind of want to make sure that he does get pushed. Like, you want to push Grand Zeno to go as far as he can, and the only way to do that is by already hurting the tower quite a bit. 
the more you hurt their towers, the further you're in, the further Grand Zeno is willing to go. Now, the final push is probably the most important push. This is more of a side objective uh, or a main objective in the middle of the game, and that is defeating the Great Ape. Now, when you defeat the Great Ape, it is pretty much the equivalent of getting a massive Grand Zeno boost, where defeating the final towers is pretty much the main objective. But I see a lot of people lose to the same tactic. See, you could go for the Grand Zeno, uh, you could go for the monkey off rip, right? But you need to have somebody watching your back because there's a high chance you could get back capped, which is whenever, because at that exact moment when the monkey spawns, the Ozaru, so to speak, uh, he will spawn, but there will be a Zeno on both sides of the map attacking towers by then. So it's either you help out the Zeno, you have someone back cap, or you defend your back cap and you make sure they focus on boss. Now, there's certain characters that are better at this than others because there's certain characters that are better at fighting, completing objectives than others, such as Piccolo. Amazing. You need him to keep on the bosses. Uh, you need him to do objectives because he's just that guy whenever it comes down to single target damage and boss damage. And then there's someone like Vegeta who's amazing at defending. So you kind of need him to play defense. Uh, you could just go on all out, but that's if the enemy is dumb enough. But in higher leagues of gameplay, you need to make sure that you are going to be uh, covered in all ends. It's either you all go in and fight at the same time, defeat the Ozaru, and defeat the enemy team at the same time, get the mega push, or you need to complete the objective with the mega push and do the objective uh, uh, at the same time as pushing them or them pushing you. You just need to make sure that does not happen. All right, and the last map thing we need to talk about is definitely the Gods of Destruction. Because whenever you kill a God of Destruction, that unlocks a very specific part of the map, either allowing you to backdoor or unlock much stronger beings in the middle of the map. And these stronger beings are massive EXP nodes. And everyone kind of just forgets about them. But if you don't forget about them, obviously, and you kind of go for them, then they are like the Pilaf gang and stuff like that. You get these EXP nodes, and they are massive. They'll take like a level 5 to level 7. Like, that's how big they are. And it's like, these EXP nodes can change the game incredibly fast. And that's very, very important that that actually does happen in your favor over the enemy's favor. So, the last thing we're going to talk about is rules of engagement. Uh, rules of engagement are pretty much based off of where are you. And what can you do to get the first hit? Uh, the first, uh, the way to get the first hit can happen in two ways, shape, or form. Whether that be using a skill, or whether that be using bushes, or whether that be using the charge uh, into a sneak attack. Now, sneak attacks could happen based off of if you're flying midair, and you'll notice that you catch up speed. The further, the faster you go, the the more you catch speed. Now you're at like rush distance. If you get close enough to somebody and they don't notice you, you could sneak attack them. And if you sneak attack them, two things can happen. Either they notice you and they counterattack, or neither of you hit each other and then you start the rush after. Or you get the perfect counterattack and you could follow up with a move instantly after. Now, this could be in the favor of a lot of characters such as Piccolo, who could throw out special beam cannons. And the special beam cannon can... Uh, literally do a crap ton of damage to somebody if they if it is done perfectly with the right sneak attack. Now, these very complex mechanics are very hard to pull off, so I suggest always using bushes to your advantage, clouds to your advantage, any type of like side construct that hides your appearance, because then you can get the sneak attack rush. Now, the only thing is, if they are also standing in place or they are just walking, you cannot hit them with this attack. You have to wait till they're rushing. Uh, that's the other downside. You can't just sneak attack them and snake them out of the bushes while you're charging and they're not. So this is a very complex mechanic that you can only use whenever it's in your favor during a very specific time. So another thing we need to talk about is definitely the other part, which is what happens if you're on the defensive. Now, when you're on the defensive, two things need to happen. You need to either use a getaway skill you need to, or, uh, and charge out, or you need to actually stand your ground and and use walking and uh, a lot of shifting and micromanaging in order to stay out of harm's way against multiple assailants or just one. 
you need to be very careful because this could also end you very quickly if you're using objectives or anything like that. That's why it's always better to wait until Zeno's attacking. So one of you guys can do objective or two of you guys can do objective and then they take out Zeno or they just like uh, uh, they notice you. So one of those two things can happen. You got to wait till you have that Zeno push and really take advantage of them. All right. So uh, freaking the other tidbit is uh, when when is it the appropriate time to use your R skill? And that's your spell. Your spell is a very, very important mechanic. And uh, if you use your spell incorrectly, then you can pretty much like equal a loss right away in whatever combat you're going through at that moment. So these spells, they're very, very specific, very, very class specific. So if you do not use the spell correctly, then, you know, that's pretty much a loss. So pay attention to your spells. Always pay attention to what your spells can do and then abuse them the way that you can. Now, ultimates. Ultimates are just used the appropriate way like skills. I don't think there's any very specific ultimate that goes crazy besides maybe Zamasu and stuff like that. And after that, that's pretty much about it. There's really nothing else you really have to worry about with ultimates besides using them accordingly because they don't like have ridiculous scaling. And they also don't have, like, the craziest, uh, you know, they're not exactly the craziest thing in the game towards the end game besides, like, just spamming it. Everyone spams their ultimate. But, like, the only ones that are kind of notable are, like, the spammable ultimates. Kind of like uh, piccolos that are made to spam on objectives and stuff like that to steal. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is F. Now, the F key or the dodge key for a lot of the mobile players, the dodge key is very, very important. If you guys do not know, it's pretty much free iframes. And these free iframes do allow you to actually take advantage of a battle incredibly quickly. I would never use them to engage. I would only use them to disengage. Now, the only reason I say that is because if you use your dash to engage, there's a 90% chance they're going to use theirs to disengage which leaves you at a pivotal point to get hit with any attack for the next 20 seconds that they have in their arsenal, whether that be a key skill or an ultimate. You need to use your F key whenever you're ready to dodge something crazy like a Spirit Bomb or Zamasu's ultimate. Well, uh, that's pretty much it. The only thing I have to cover next is pretty much character passives, and that's like probably the easiest part. Character passives, uh, just pay attention to what your character's passives are, because a lot of people do not. Uh, for instance, Majin Buu's passive, heal, uh, heal an ally or yourself or apply a debuff to the enemy hero to consume uh, the stock you've earned and, uh, and boost rush attack damage. Now, the thing is, right, if you heal or debuff an enemy, then you just get bonus damage whenever you rush attack an enemy off of rip. This is very, very important because a lot of people do not know what the beginning attack does. And the beginning attack, right, is your actual rush attack, your boosted rush attack. You always get one, and it is always uh, blocked behind you using it the first time, and that's it. But it can be stackable if you are using the appropriate move. Uh, it's kind of weird to understand, uh, but it's like the only... Uh, actually, I'll just show it on screen, yeah. So right here, uh, <laughs> so right here, uh, as you can see, there is the rush. This is the boosted rush attack. Every character has got a boosted rush attack. It only happens at the start of a fight whenever you first engage. But the basic rush attack looks like this. All right. Well, that kind of does it for this video. Uh, I hope this helped you guys out. If you guys got any questions, let me know down below. I will see you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell down below. I will see you guys in a future video. Peace.